going to read from Amos chapter 5, starting at verse 11, 11 and 12. Therefore, because you impose heavy rent on the poor and exact the tribute of grain from them, though you have built houses of well-hewn stone, yet you will not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, yet you will not drink their wine. For I know your transgressions are many and your sins are great. You who distress the righteous and accept bribes and turn aside the poor in the gate. Right? So here we're dealing with what God is dealing with in the time of Amos up in the north in Israel is corruption. Mm. It is, it's a moral corruption. It's a religious corruption. And it is a political corruption. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Much like today. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. I didn't have to. Much like today. And that's, that's the truth. Yes. Okay. All right. And we talked about what's, what's happening here is that the, the wealthy are oppressing the poor for their own gain, their own benefit. Right. And I said in this study, I've said a couple of times now, this is not about, it's not a social gospel. It's a gospel. Right, There's only one gospel. Yeah. There's the good the news gospel. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> All right. So, and we, we ended last week talking about the fact that God's love is rooted in giving. Right. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And I, I, I said, I remember these words I said at the end of last week was that you, you can't love without giving. Mm. You can certainly give without loving. That's right. Okay. Yes. So uh, we have to have that focus. What motivates us has to be the love of God. Okay. You know, Paul in in First Corinthians thirteen talks about if he does all of these things and works the the miracles, the gifts of the Spirit, but doesn't have love, it profits nothing. It's like a clanging symbol. All right. So we're not to love because it makes us feel good, although it, it absolutely should. We're not to mm -hmm. give because it makes us feel good, although it absolutely should. But we are to love the brethren and our neighbors mm -hmm. and, and our, our enemies. enemies. Yes. <laughs> you know, if you, you put all those three groups together, who's not there? That's it. It covers everybody. It covers everybody. Yeah. And that's exactly what Jesus but taught us. God so the world. The world. Yes, yes, absolutely. And we have that love poured into our hearts, mm -hmm. right? So we're supposed to treat people right. And that's not being done in Israel, okay? What does it mean to treat them right? With love, okay? Love your neighbor as yourself. There are a lot of reasons you can give that are wrong reasons. Yes. Okay? Yes. You can give out of obligation. Mm -hmm. Do you pay taxes? Yeah. Because you just, that's your I favorite just, thing to do? I don't like jail. <laughs> no, because you <laughs> because do it, you out, of, because you do it yeah. out of obligation, okay? Yeah. There's a lot of things that we do, we do out of obligation. That doesn't make it wrong to do. No. But it certainly doesn't count in the love column. Right. I, I don't think a lot of people love uh, inland revenue in England or IRS here in the States. It's not about love. It's about what you have to do. Okay. It's about receiving honor and glory. It's about the prestige of giving. Philanthropy. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, a lot of people are philanthropic. In other words, they give a lot. But they don't do it without selfish motivation, all right? Think about what Jesus said in, in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6, 2. He said, when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be honored by men. Truly, I say to you, they have the reward in full. In other words, they're giving. They're doing all these things, but they're doing it to be seen because of their pride, mm. not because they have love for, you know, whoever is the recipient of that, okay? Um, the other thing is a lot of people give just f to get. Now, I know the word says, as a man sows, so shall he reap. And from that truth, and that is a truth, so much heresy has come forth, mm -hmm. okay? And it's because people don't understand giving, all right? There's a give, difference between giving, and I, I, I know we've talked about this earlier in one of our studies, about giving and entrusting somebody. Yes. Okay? If you get a paycheck and you go down to the bank at the end of the week and deposit, your, you hand over your paycheck to mm -hmm. the cashier. You haven't given them anything. Mm -hmm. You have entrusted them with what is yours. 
and you have expectations as to take care of it. If you have, a, if you make investments of any kind, and you have an investment broker, you go, you have a stock broker, and you go and you write them a check for lots of money, and you hand them that check, you haven't given them anything. You have entrusted them with what is yours, with an expectation of getting a lot more back. That's why you do it, right? Well, the fact of the matter is nothing's yours. It all belongs to God. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. You have nothing. Blessed are the poor in spirit because they know that. Okay. Yes. So if you're giving just for the purpose of getting greater back, that's not giving out of love. No. That's giving out of self-interest. That's giving out of selfishness. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it, it's become so common to see churches or ministries playing on that, saying, you know, send me your money. And God's going to give you, God's, and it's almost like they're saying God is now obligated to you. God owes you more. God owes you nothing. He owes you nothing. Not a, not a thing. And you, on the other hand, owe him everything. everything. Right? Absolutely. So it's, it's what the, God's not looking in your wallet. God's not looking in your pocketbook. God is looking in your heart. Searching our hearts. And, and he can see what's in your heart, okay? So turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of his glory and grace